Talk Now for the week ending May 1st, 2016. My name is Eric Stromquist, and we talk all things smart control. But if you want to be smart, you got to bring on my co host, the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only Kenny. He's got most of his arm back, Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, baby, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Eric. You're right. Look, no more uh, Iron Man. I cast. I uh, I'm doing physical therapy now, so uh, I'm I'm up to one and a half arm uh, band instead of one arm band. I'm a one and a half arm. So Dude, it, it hurts, good, man. I, I did my uh, my physical therapy exercise this morning. I tell you, it's a uh, invitation for pain, but uh, it's good. I, I just feel revitalized. It's coming back, but uh, I uh, I empathize. Anybody who has to go through that, you know, getting an operation to get stuff fixed up is a real painful experience. But you know, say Levy, I'm uh, the weather's changing. We're getting some. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming down to Atlanta, going golfing with you. Yeah, so. yeah, and we're going to be be the one arm golfers, right? One arm, <laughs> one eye golfers. So it's just well, a new breed, man. We're like cyber uh, cyborgs, right? Yeah. So we'll listen, strokes, so yeah. So listen, Kenny. Uh, I tell you what, man. I can't believe you're not wearing your swag today. So I uh, want to say thanks very much to Functional Devices, Jim Huey oh, Hewitson. Oh, oh, uh, we I saw got it right here. Oh, you better. You got to wear your swag because our, our deal is if you send us swag, we'll wear it. Now time out because I no 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 no. That's uh, it's too late, Kenny. It's too my late. Monitor. I, I've got I've got the Functional Devices sitting there. All right, put it on. All right, while Kenny goes and gets his thing. Uh, we will wear your swag if you send it to us. And uh, Functional Devices, if you don't know, is an awesome company. They uh, they uh, uh, make all kinds of stuff for the, the systems integrators. This particular hat, RIB, R-I-B, Relay in a Box, was a very, very uh, innovative, innovative uh, product. Uh, people use those by the thousands. So, again, we saw those guys at uh, the CGNA meeting. Oh, here comes Kenny. He's got his red hat on. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah. So, again, we will wear it. We don't care whether we handle your line or not. If you got cool swag, we'll wear it. And today's theme is red. Red ribs, baby. Red ribs. So, uh, again, thanks to those guys. And, uh, you know, Kenny, I tell you what, a a shout out to uh, all the people we saw at uh, Controls Group North American meeting last night. All right, so Kenny, I was saying a special shout out to all the uh, all the folks we saw at uh, Controls Group North America last week. Uh, uh, we actually did our show from California, so if you're a watcher, you know that uh, we were in California. CGNA uh, Controls Group North America is like 49 of the top distributors in the country. So a special shout out to people like John Donahue from Controls Consultants, Dave Susky from Twinco. Steve Rowe from MI Controls up in Seattle. The list goes on and on. CGNA is absolutely the best of the best. They also have the best vendors too. So that's where we got this cool hat from Functional Devices. And uh, we'll have some more videos coming up next week, Kenny, with, uh, with um, uh, you know, some more of the great products we saw at the show. We sure did, Eric. It's, uh, like you say, it's quite an event because there's so much, again, information, innovation. It's the relentless... Uh, Pursuit of excellence, right? Well, it, it is, and the technology keeps changing. And this is where you, when you go to these meetings, it's like, um, it's the cliff notes. It's the condensed version of, of, of everything that's going on at once. Uh, like the vendoropoly, I really like that because, uh, you know, it, it was literally designed to give you a five-minute presentation on new products, the innovations. Things are not static. They're constantly changing. Uh, we're getting greater economies of scale. The products, uh, the 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 form fit is the same, but the costs are going down because they're just, you know, it's a competition and, and just they're just adding more innovation, which we'll cover some of those in, in the couple of posts coming up here. We'll be talking more about how a product has been improved and improved and, and the thermostat, the race in the small space. It's incredible how everybody now has a very strong champion thermostat or room controller in, in the market now. Well, they really do, Kenny. And I tell you what's interesting is uh, Snyder Electric's got a great stat they just came out with. So hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that some too. But so listen, Kenny, you know, you and I, uh, we're kind of like the yin and yang of uh, controls, right? If we're in football, you're Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. So if you're going to wear your hat like that, I have to turn mine around, right? I so, saw that. So you're yeah. looking young now. You always got that in the, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, look at, look at, you're look killing at, it, Eric, you're killing it. Look at, look at, looking young is okay. So uh, no offense to, to functional devices, but Kenny and I have to offer all perspectives. That's what we do on control trends. So, uh, but yes, yeah, sp- talking about young dude, uh, California, what a place, huh? Yeah. Well, I got a daughter out there uh, and a son-in-law that the, the, the really, uh, they work hard and they enjoy 
probably the, the most incredible natural vista that you can ever see. No matter where you're at, it just if you stop for a minute and look around, it's just so pretty. It's so picturesque. The sky just seems to open up in a different way. The sun shines a different way. I mean, I love Pennsylvania, I love Pittsburgh, but uh, when you go out there, you can see how people uh, click. They just don't come back. Well, they, they want to go out there and they'll say, and if you saw our interview last week, we, we got to, to meet Jim Young and see him where he lives in Carlsbad. It's a beautiful part of the world. And I think it's exactly what happened with Jim. He was telling us a story. He, Jim's originally from uh, Buffalo. He was telling us a story how he was out on the West Coast, uh, you know, doing some sales calls back when he was with the computer company and decided right there he wanted to live in California. He said, I'm going to live here. Uh, his wife, who was his girlfriend at the time, he apparently calls her and says, we're going to we're going to live in Southern California. You know, and she goes, OK, that's great. Next call he got, a guy says, hey, they're looking for somebody uh, on the West Coast. You interested in interviewing? And apparently he went right there up to the West, uh, up to Los Angeles, interview, got a job. Next thing you know, he's on the West Coast, never gone back. And, and I think you and I can see why. Well, and too, it's his attitude. I mean, when I you called him uh, Jim Nostradamus uh, Young, yeah. I think it's uh, appropriate because, I mean, he, that is where the cradle of innovation is occurring right now. I mean, you've got Silicon Valley up in the San Francisco area, but really where the, the East meets the West lately and all the technology coming from the, uh, you know, Asia, from, uh, you know, Japan, um, in Korea, North South Korea, it just all seems to hit right against California like a wave. And then it gets transfused into new technologies that we're using and applying to the, uh, the, the exciting new innovations. Well, so why, 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 really why, but, but yeah, but why do you think that is, Kenny? Because I got a theory. Why do you think? Why do you think it's happening in California? Uh, I think. Well, I mean, it's a, that's a complicated uh, question for me because I tell you first, the people that moved to California at the very onset, yeah, uh, they, they they came up with a different version of uh, you know the America, uh, that, right. They crossed a lot of. They went over incredible obstacles, and they were just defiant to nature, and they conquered it, and uh, you know, or, or just lived with it. And then they they stopped the uh, and, and embraced it. Now you know, they lead the world, and probably uh, you know, uh, saving the, the planet stuff. You know, with the Title Twenty Fours and and the energy conservation. It's all happened there. But then what I think too is that you have it's the first place from the, the you know Pacific Ocean. So the Pacific Rim companies, uh, they in order to penetrate America, they have to come through California first. So it's a big stopping ground. Well, I think, I, you know, I think that all that's true. And, and, I, and I think another part of it, and I think we saw it, I think the environment is very conducive for relaxing. And I think most of us get so keyed up. I know we had a consultant once that came in and worked with us and he talked about, uh, you can work in the business or you can work on the business. And, and, and his theory was if you're working in the business, it's really difficult to see what's going on in the trends and how things are changing. You almost have to step back uh, to, to be able to see things. And, and I think that, you know, part of that lifestyle out in California, I mean, we ate so healthy out there. We saw our friend Anthony Bronzo from Control Pow out there, spent some time with Anthony and, and, and his lady, Lindsay. And and dude, everywhere you go, people are eating healthy, they're exercising, the weather's great. So there's a, a natural balance there. And I think out of that balance comes the ability to be able to perceive different things, right? Where you can think about things. I mean, think about it for a minute. You know, you and I, uh, you know, have been sort of students of a guy named Tim Ferriss who wrote The 4-Hour Body, The 4-Hour Work Week, and and so on and so forth. And, and, and guys like Tim Ferriss will challenge you and they'll say, if you're just being busy, I mean, one of the hardest jobs to do is to think to really take time and think and make time for that. And part of the whole premise of the four hour work week is if you're just nailing it every day, nonstop, you're not taking time to do the discipline of relaxing and thinking, you're probably going to miss a lot of the changes. Well, I think it was a point that Jim made that, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more difficult to think and, and, and to make time for it. But that's the most important aspect of business, you know, is that, you know, if somebody leads the way, you know, in the Air Force, we had that uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Right. And a lot of people get routined. They start to follow. They, they're looking for, you know, somebody already cutting the path and, and somebody, uh, you know, making the roads paved and, and putting in the utilities. And then they can come in, they can function well. They're, they're, they're very at terms with a, you know, pre-established routine or, or you know, a schedule. But uh, to be able to create the new uh, paths and carve new uh, dimensions within an industry that already, uh, you know, very, very uh, developed and matured. It's very challenging, but you, it's all there. And it, well, won't, it is, it won't but, change, but, so. but for all of us who are having to work nonstop, that don't have time to stop and relax and think and benefit from these great new ideas, there is a solution, Kenny. There's an absolute solution, and it's go to Realcom Ibicom because uh, Jim Young has got some of the best thinkers on the planet. 
Uh, we talked about it again. There's still time to register. Uh, please check our interview out with Jim Young if you have more questions on it. But where else can you go as an integrator or a distributor, as a manufacturer, rub elbows with the real estate people that are on board with the smart building, the smart building uh, renaissance, and the smart building revolution. They're there. They've got money. They're buying. But I, I highly encourage you, uh, take a moment. If you, if, you, if you do nothing else this year, do do the Tritium Summit and definitely go to uh, Jim Young's Realcom Ibicon, which is what, June uh, 21st to the 24th, I think. Nice segue, Eric. I'll tell you, that was really good. You, took the, <laughs> you spun it right right into the uh, what we're going to be talking about. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, well, we have some posts coming up here. We've got a Siemens post coming up uh, next week. We have an integrated roundtable where we're going to talk more in depth about some of the important functionalities of the uh, Realcom Ibicom for integrators. There's an integrator roundtable that you can't miss because uh, – uh, just so much networking, so much collaboration. Right. I mean, you can be in the room with people who can really change. Uh, you might need some help. You might need some support. Uh, you might need to know about some other new neighboring innovations. And it all happens in that kind of a, an environment. So this integrated roundtable at the IvyCon is going to be, gonna be awesome. And then you get a chance to see all those great facilities. So he's got tours out in Silicon Valley where you can go see like Levi's Stadium, all these other buildings that have just advanced. Uh, I mean, I think are, are NADARs, I think is the right word for the smart building control renaissance. I didn't mean the people that have sort of gone out in front vocab word, NADAR. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Okay. Hey, I tell you what, because, because, but, but listen, let's, let's, I got a segue for you. Let's talk about one of your favorite subjects. Now let's talk about women in the HVAC industry, which is our first post, buddy. All righty. Well, you know what? It's a, uh, it was a very contemporary post because we had just posted uh, a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, an important document that kind of summarizes the, the criticality of our situation uh, in the HVAC building automation industry. We are filling, uh, we're not filling the holes in the lineup. Uh, you know, we have no draft system. We, we're not getting enough people into the system quickly enough. And uh, it reminds me when I was in the Air Force how the, uh, there weren't enough men uh, taking on roles uh, in security. So they experimented and tried women. And uh, I was part of a pilot project at uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base where they, uh, women not only demonstrated they could do it, but they excelled in it, and it just it created a, it was it was a solution for a manning issue. This is back, you know, many 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 years ago, say like 1985, 86. But then we see a, a corollary path coming up with the HVACR. This post was women in the HVAC HVACR 2016 scholarships deadline, or is June 1st, and so uh, it was an exciting post for a couple reasons. One. It reiterated the uh, the shortage of people. Current industry estimates project current industry estimates project a need for eighty six thousand additional employees over the next five years. One of the WHVAC our goals is to help the industry fill this demand now and going forward with deserving and qualified women candidates. In two thousand sixteen, women in the HVAC are is delighted to be able to increase the scholarship amount to. $2,000 uh, for certain qualifications for technical or trade schools and several scholarships available for a bachelor's degree program at a four-year college. So we have the, uh, the hot button uh, on there, the URL to sign up and, and try to uh, qualify for these scholarships. But the reality is, Eric, is that part of our def deficiencies in, in staffing HVACR uh, positions, which is the fastest growing industry in North America, will be uh, coming to, to, to let the females and the women that are qualified help fill those those gaps. And they're very qualified to do it, and they're very anxious to do it. So uh, to me, it's just a win-win-win situation. Well, it really is, Kenny. And I would love to get somebody from that organization on the show to interview. So if you know somebody from that organization or you're with that organization, we would love to find out more, make sure our Control Trends community knows more about what you guys bring to the, what you ladies bring to the table, I should say. Awesome. All right, big dog, what we have up next? Well, next is the CGNA's Mike Sackett. Together we are better. I thought uh, you had an outstanding um, round of interviews with some of the key people in the industry. And, you know, quite, a, uh, you know, we had to, uh, a nice uh, comment from Ed Kratzer who said, uh, great interview, Eric. Mike has a way with words that inspires us all. Proud to be part of the CGNA. And so that kind of feedback just reinforces what I'm, I'm saying that, that not only was a great meeting with, with the elite distributors and elite um, vendors and manufacturers, but then putting it all together in, in, a, in a very concise, synergetic meeting, uh, it takes talent. And I think that Mike and Jim uh, Heyman did a great job and it was a great interview. 
Well, you know, it really was. And Mike Sackett, very articulate guy. He sort of leads uh, CGNA. The distributors hired a group to sort of work with us and guide us. So Mike Sackett's the director. He comes from a financial background, so he really understands the numbers of things. But a very practical thinker, Kenny. A great guy to guide us. Jim Heyman is, is is the marketing guy out there, but they bring together the best of the best, Kenny, in terms of having uh, uh, the best marketing people, the best IT people that sort of guide us. So together, so for example, um, you know, one of the hardest things for, you know, this being a distributor is having stuff in stock when one of your customers needs it because nobody can have everything in stock. Well, CGNA is banded together. They have uh, more inventory, Kenny, than, than combined than anybody on the planet. And uh, we banded together. We have inter-member inventory where we can, you know, logistically get that out to a different location if need be. So, uh, so great stuff from uh, Mike Sackett and a good interview there. And we got a lot more coming from that conference from Newport Beach. So, uh, all right, Big Doggy, what do we have up next? Well, next up, we have 3D printing enables new generation of heat exchangers. Uh, this modern process improves performance and reduces waste. Now, I am just still uh, stymied by new technology on, uh, of this nature and this caliber. Uh, I listened to a, a webinar recently, and, and um, we got the chance through Echo Rhythm and Artificial Intelligence, how they were talking about you know, the, the 3D impact, uh, 3D printing uh, in, in up there in the space stations. They don't have to send up uh, resupplies you know, the, the, from the book Bold. They're going to start using 3D printers to manufacture whatever they need up there in place. It's just an incredible concept. But... This got real close to our business, and this is um, this is the Department of uh, Energy working in conjunction with the University of Maryland using 3D systems, and uh, it is a fabulous concept. The next generation heat exchangers weighs 20% less, is 20% more efficient, and can be manufactured quicker compared to current designs with no waste. So all the stamping of metal and all the excess uh, trimming being done that gets put into the basket or the, the bin for uh, recycling and reprocessing, that's gone because there's nothing excess. So uh, this was a experiment that was very, very successful. And they're telling us that what's ahead, the heat exchanger, that uh, this particular 3D heat exchanger acts both as an evaporator and condenser, can be used in commercial and residential air conditioning and heat pump systems of varying sizes. Uh, the University of Maryland's new one kilowatt miniaturized air refrigerant heat exchanger prototype paves the way for new designs that will help reduce the amount of energy that is used annually for the HVAC in the United States. So I, I'm just, and then, you know, in addition, the 10 kW prototype will be fabricated as part of the current project. So that's part B. And then both prototypes will be tested and demonstrated in the three ton heat pump. Uh, the University of Maryland research team expects that the new heat exchangers will be in commercial production within the next five years. So to me, uh, we're playing with uh, the imagination, uh, you know, taking oh, shape into, and, and you know. It, uh, it's it's going to change everything, you know. And, and, and Kenny and I refer to this book, Bold. you got to check it out. It, it really gets into how the world's going to change. And, and, and I think, so they're talking about artificial intelligence, and they're talking about 3D printing, how that's going to change everything. It's essentially, you know, as Kenny said from the Post, going to allow you to create, there's going to be an overabundance of supply, basically. Uh, so it's, I think it's going to change everything. We won't go into that today, but Kenny, I mean, this is the fact that, you know, we've talked about this and now right on the cusp of the smart buildings controls Renaissance here, we got a unit that's being made, uh, you know, via 3d printing. And we've already talked about echo rhythm and the artificial intelligence. So both those predictors out of bold are already coming into the smart buildings, uh, uh, controls Renaissance. And I tell you, it's fascinating. Uh, I mentioned Anthony Bronzo before, our friend from Control Pal. I, I spent some time with him in Southern California. Anthony was showing me, because he's a big guitar player, right? And, and if you've heard like the Fender Guitar Company, Kenny, like Fender Stratocasters, Telecasters, sure have, sure. you know, Fender, Fender Stratocaster, what Garrett Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, all of them play. I've got a Stratocaster. I mean, it's like the consummate guitar. They showed, Anthony showed me a video where they made a Fender Stratocaster out of cardboard, okay, <laughs> and, and and strung it up and 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 you know using the 3D sort of technology out of cardboard. They took it to a, a famous guy, I forget one of the one of the newer groups, uh, Pearl Jam or somebody like that. The guy's playing the guitar. It's un, he's blown away by it. It's the coolest looking guitar you ever seen. It's a Fender design, 
made out of cardboard. So, I mean, for the doomsayers out there that are really worried about how we're going to sustain the planet and so on and so forth, I think part of the answer is 3D printing. The other part is artificial intelligence. And, of course, the big one is staying informed which is where Kenny and I are trying to make a little mark in the universe because as my teacher Marshall Thurber once said, nothing is obvious to the uninformed. What we have up next, big dog? All right, well, we, uh, we're, we really appreciate the post from the United States Department of Energy. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to, to keep putting content, uh, very important repurposed content out there because uh, these are hit, being read and we're getting comments back. We appreciate the comments. Uh, but uh, this was another striking uh, – see, I think the problem sometimes is we work you know, microversion. Everything's micromanaged, and, and we're living a day-to-day with a, a rush tempo, like you were saying, where California took us uh, into a new mental mentality where you relax as hard as you work. And um, it's kind of a new concept. But we, we lose track of the macro uh, impact that we make. When we do a good job and we, we reduce our carbon footprint one by one, building by building – uh, we reduce light litter one comet at a time, one one building at a time with a bad time clock and use some of the intermatic uh, technologies that are very simple, basic, cheap technology, low-hanging fruit. But it, it adds up over, you know, uh, you know, city by city, uh, major user by major user. And this uh, particular post goes into that great detail. So as part of the Department of Energy and the administration strategy to increase productivity, uh, and, and decrease use energy uh, and eliminate waste in the nation, with our, our nation's buildings. The U.S. Department of Energy recognized five, I'm sorry, six organizations for their leadership in replacing and upgrading rooftop units as the Better Building Alliance rooftop unit campaign. Combined, these organizations in one year have saved an estimated one trillion British thermal units, BTUs, or more than 11 million on 11. 11 million on utility costs with efficient rooftop replacements, retrofits, quality management, and operations. So since 2013, the 250 ARC partners have upgraded 59,000 rooftop units for a total energy savings of 10 trillion BTUs or 93 million in cost savings. And the six people that, that need to be recognized for that were Arby's Restaurant Group, Giant Tiger Stores Limited, Southern California Edison, Target Corporation, Walmart Stores, Inc., and Whole Foods Market. And uh, please go to the post and just take a look at this because this is the documented proof that when you go to a, a higher efficiency unit and you take advantage of new technologies, you get your return on investments. Uh, there's just, the savings are incredible. Uh, there was one here in particular. It says Whole Foods Markets retrofitted 839 advanced control retrofits, the highest number of advanced RTU control retrofits, resulting in an estimated saving of 7.6 million kWh worth $740,000 annually. And so Whole Foods had the highest number of RTU installations and exceeded the challenge speculation. So uh, basically, uh, that's just hats off to uh, the major corporations that are taking this thing seriously, helping our industry sustain itself, helping our contractors stay busy. So well done. And please continue the comments so we can get some feedback and know that uh, some of these things that we're putting on here uh, are actually being, uh, you know, that are vital or in being read by our industry. No, we appreciate that. And Kenny, of course, as good as that is, if they would just follow your plan to fix the light litter program, they would sell, say, billions instead of millions. So, uh, <laughs> again, for our listeners, I know light litter is when you walk around in the middle of the day, you see the lights on. Uh, photo sales out of sync or whatever. Hey, you know, as an industry, I think we can, we, we can solve that. I mean, go knock on the door. If you, if, if you're in the business, knock on the door and say, we can fix that for you. Obviously, uh, photo cell, time clock, Intermatic's got a, uh, some great products we talked about last week. We got a, actually a video on that we'll be showing next week. So light litter, let's eradicate the light litter. Hey, for Kenny. Sure, Eric. I, I, I really appreciate you, uh, Helping to keep reiterate that because uh, you know again we get comments. Uh, the the reality is is that that's a sales call for the service companies that are slowing down here. Once they get uh, everything retrofitted and they get uh, people ready for the cooling season coming up, if you drive by a organization and you see uh, whether it's a church, school, even our uh, city uh, municipalities, roads, uh, you know, so the state. Department of Transportation, anywhere you go and you see lights on, you know that something is amiss. It's yeah. a sales call. 
Right. To, to so try you take, turn your, that into you take your a, smartphone a, out. You a win win situation right. by uh, giving them the support they need, giving them a right. really affordable and, and sustainable solution. Yeah, Kenny, you know, remember Mark Jewell, the, the trainer that we work with a while back uh, that, that, that really helps because it, it really, at the end of the day, uh, the, the real estate folks and the people that own these properties, they're just like us. They're bombarded with so many different things that it's hard for them to keep up with everything. And as Mark Jewell taught us, you sort of got to get their attention. And with the smartphone, you see the light litter, you can just simply take a picture. I know I had a, an instance I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. It's the middle of the day. Lights are on. I stopped in, talked to one of the uh, one of the retail people in this particular facility. He goes, "Yeah, and they're off at night, so people are getting scared." So, so anyway, long story short, took the pictures, uh, took it back to one of my salespeople. They're following up with the property management company because it's not only in that particular case if the photo sells out, so the lights are on in the middle of the day, you're wasting energy. But if they're off at night. Somebody gets mugged. Now you got a liability. So I, right. I think it's, it's a double whammy, Eric. And, and uh, you know, we're in Western Pennsylvania, and we have a. Um, we're not like Florida. I think Florida has the most lightning strikes of any area in the country. But we probably lose electricity, uh, without exaggeration, once every uh, two to three months, and it, it could be from a power failure or a great storm, or lightning hitting one of the buildings or hitting hitting the lines. So uh, we'll see sections of uh, you know certain towns. Everybody's lights are out of whack, so they're on during the day and off during the night, and that's scary because, uh, like you said, uh, there's an expectation if you have lights on, they're supposed to work and they're supposed to provide uh, you know visibility and and you know deter uh, things and, and give people the benefit of a layer of security. And when that's not there, there's liability. Yeah, and 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 I don't think that the people are are deliberately doing it. They probably just don't know. So I mean, what better way? to uh, maybe pick up a new customer because we're all professionals in, in this industry. Snap a picture. You go into any of, the, any of the tenants and say, hey, you know, who's the company? You can get a name and a phone number or an email address, send it to them and say, hey, look, just want to make, not sure whether you're aware of this. This is an easy fix. Call me. I can get it fixed for you. You're probably going to pick some customers up. Yeah, you won't get everybody. And, and you know, you know uh, just, you know, nature is going to be that a lot of people just uh, don't tell me what to do or whatever. But I think the people that are the, owners and the people that are responsible for it, they're the ones that are relying on those layers of people in the middle. And, and the people in the middle are the ones that are doing wearing more hats. And like you say, they didn't replace so-and-so when they retired or, or they had a budget cut. So we had to let go of somebody. And so that's just another, you know, it's an injury to, to time and energy. There's people just don't have enough, uh, you know, there's not enough hours in a day and, and energy in, in, a, in a human being to do it. So the more of this you can make, uh, machine to machine, the more of this that you can make remotely settable, the more of this you can make auto automated by using sensors and, and, and you know and a system that resets everything. So imagine if you do have a, a, a chain of uh, urgent care facilities throughout Western Pennsylvania, lightning strikes and takes out you know maybe the lights on five or six of your locations because they're all they're like uh, they're like CVS pharmacies now. Uh, they got to take a guy and put him in a car, drive him to each location, and reset the time clock. Imagine if you could just come to work and just verify that the lights are, the schedules are on time. You know, use a backup, have it set to the, uh, some kind of earth clock, you know, and with a setting with the uh, sunrise and sunset in conjunction with a sensor that if you do have inclement weather or, or you, know, uh, you know, an eclipse, your lights stay on when they're needed. But every other time they're off. When well, and I tell you what, stay tuned because, like I say, next week we're going to show you a really cool product that uh, that will really help with it. But talking about the Earth, Kenny, seems to me like the Earth is getting smaller, at least the world, at least the global building automation economy. Let's bring on our man from India and we'll give you a view into what's happening in India. Kenny, tell us about our guest. Love to, Eric. We have Samir Pradhan from CICC and the Director of Control Trends India. Welcome to the show, Samir. Hey, Samir, how's it going? Thank you very much. Well, welcome, uh, both of you guys. Uh, how are you doing? Because I am I mean, a couple of weeks, <laughs> I, I see you guys not doing too well. Uh, Fair enough. I, I'm doing better. I got my cast off. I have my, uh, I started physical therapy last Thursday and I'm a, instead of being a one arm bandit, I'm a one and a half arm bandit, but I'm getting better. Thank you for asking. That's kind of scary thinking about Kenny gotten more than one arm to be a bandit with us in there. <laughs> well, dude, the and first I, que the first question I got for you is, what time is it in India? Oh, it's about half past eight uh, on a Saturday evening. 
So, okay. So, so, so you, you, you are in here working, uh, you're educating our control trends audience, which is fantastic. So, uh, tell us a bit about, uh, the, the site and what's going on with control trends India. for our listeners who might not know, Samir has partnered up with us. He has, we've opened a site in India called control is the link is control trends.in. Samir is the director. Uh, talk a bit about the site, Samir, what you got going on there? Yeah, this 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 month started off with uh, with uh, Control Trends India featuring on automated buildings. Uh, you know that that was a major major event. As far as the Indian uh, scenario got concerned, I got a number of calls and you know great emails saying, "Hey, congratulations! You know it's nice that you took a cause, the Indian cause, onto the you know, the American shores." So I think the the, the month started well on that particular note. Well, fantastic. Well, talk to us a little bit about uh, uh, you sort of, you know, found us uh, at the AHR show and the Control Trends Awards and and uh, we're sort of not happy. I and mean, I look at you sort of as a crusader uh, in India because uh, the way the market sort of has been. Uh, explain to our audience a, bit, audience a little bit about the way the market has been and sort of what you're hoping to accomplish with uh, open systems. Yeah, uh the, the exciting part of, of uh, the journey now is last, see, ever since the elections took place in, in India in 2014, you know, there was there was this these teething times in terms of the new government settling in and, you know, people expecting a lot of reforms to take place. So about six months ago, six, seven months ago, a lot of reforms did take place, economic reforms taking place and, and whatever announcement the government had t- taken up in terms of smart cities or digital India, make in India, you know, all those initiatives have started rolling in, is what I see. I see a number of uh, government initiatives, a lot of, lot of conferences, road shows happening all over the country. So it's not only, uh, uh, it's not only uh, uh, limited to a few uh, metropolitan cities, but practically spread all over. And uh, the exciting thing is about the smart cities, which is coming up, you know, the first 20 smart cities were, were named and uh, I, like, you know, cities like Pune, Coimbatore, we have uh, Bhubaneswar, uh, we had Vizak. Uh, so, you know, all, all uh, the length and breadth of India are from the top to bottom and east to west, everything is getting covered. So that's an exciting, exciting thing that I see happening in the in the short term. Well, Samir, I uh, I know that you've been very busy, not just with the uh, Control Trans India, uh, developing the site and, and getting things rolling, but uh, you recently moved professionally your your business location. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, I mean I mean that's one the one one very major thing that has happened. Uh, uh, the CICC and Control Trends uh, has moved into a, a spacious, uh, very beautiful new office. Uh, we can have, we have a, a, a well-appointed uh, office which can accommodate about 40 to 45 people and uh, with some excellent conference facilities and stuff like that. So, you know, it, 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 was, it was about time that we did something on this particular, uh, in this aspect. So, this, the, the people are very excited, the people who have been working with me for the last 10, 12 years, you know, everybody is, is, is very happy. And uh, I, th- I, th- I think it, it, it completely changes a lot of things for us too. Because, you know, we've been expanding business-wise, we've been working in India for a long time, we do a lot of work in the Middle East. And, you know, it was about time that we really expanded our workspace too. Very, very cool. For, for our viewers out there who might not know, tell me about what CC, what, what, your, what your integration company does. Yeah, CICC Automation has been in, in the market for the last 12 years. And we guys have been <clears throat> practically working in, uh, in the CRE market uh, across India. We've done about 12 green building projects where we're talking about the HVAC uh, systems, we're talking about the third-party integrations, we're talking about fire alarms, for fire alarm systems, PA, public address systems, the CCTV systems, integrating everything, bringing on onto a common platform. So that's typically what we've been doing on all the LEED certified gold rated buildings. I mean, these have been about, as I mentioned, to be about 12 to be precise in Bombay itself. And then uh, 
Apart from that, we also have a, a very significant focus on the pharmaceutical market. I mean, we've done a number of projects in India and the Middle East, and, and the number is, is growing by the day. Uh, we are now fo focusing very, very solidly on the data center market because that's, that's an area which is booming in India. So these are typically these kind of things which are coming up. The hotel industry is, is picking up the, the, the hotel, the hospitals. There's just far many, too many hospitals coming up in India. So healthcare is an area which is very, very close to my heart. And I see India coming up in a big way in these areas too. Well, Samir, uh, calendar-wise, what's coming up next? Uh, that's a great, uh, that's good stuff, and, and I know how busy that is to move an office and get re resituated, get comfortable. I know you got designate, designated space uh, for future uh, Control Trans India events, but uh, what's next up in the, uh, what's coming up in May? We're, we're turning the event here on April. What's What do you got the, on the calendar for May? Yeah, the I mean, May is going to be very busy, uh, exciting. I have the, I'm covering the first event that's a Delta Controls is coming up with an event on 4th of May in Mumbai uh, and Control Trends will be, I'm invited and I'll be covering that particular event. Uh, then, you know, immediately it's followed by uh, the Project Architects and uh, Consultants Conclave that's happening in Goa. Uh, it's a very big event and uh, the entire fire security market, the people are coming up. Plus, there is there is a there is going to be a, a window for smart cities because most of the consultants and architects who are who are uh, going to be assembling there would also be part of the smart city projects. So I would be covering that. That's a three day uh, event in in Goa. So I mean it's it's a day night program. So you actually be with families, all of us. So we get a get great time interacting and have fun and and learn and and, awesome. and, and transact business business. No, that's going to be a lot of fun, Samir. And, and, and my understanding is Goa is kind of like the Miami Beach of, uh, uh, of India, all the Hollywood people, or maybe a combination of Hollywood and Miami Beach. It's supposedly a great, great place. So you're going to be covering it for Control Trends. And I uh, hope we'll get some great video down there and some great interviews. And, and I think that was part of the objective of Control Trends India was to give the, the, the rest of the world uh, a view into the Indian market and then also to give the Indian market a view to the rest of the world. And sort of that being said, you, you were with us at AHR. So what was your take on some of the products and, and what you saw at AHR? Oh, AH was, AHR was a, was a great uh, experience for me uh, in terms of, you know, seeing what I had I actually not seen. Uh, there were so many technologies which actually were too open, interoperable. Uh, I For the first time, I... I saw uh, systems like LinkSpring, for example, and, you know, I actually saw the cyber security products. And uh, I came to know about Project Haystack and the importance of Project Haystack into, into the, the future of building controls. Uh, data analytics was another area which, you know, we've been actually only seeing uh, or, or reading it on, on the websites and stuff, but I actually got to meet meet people who are behind these these projects so that was a great experience very humbling experience and uh, and you know people who are erudite scholars and and visionaries so that that was awesome we we took back home we we got uh, linkspring as one of our partners we brought them into india and they are very shortly we should be closing on one of the our major projects with linkspring uh, we had uh, we had uh, Mr. Sham Bhavsar, who is the director and uh, of Neptronic Middle East, he came to India here this last week. He was here, so we, we were working with Neptronic and uh, SMC, of course, uh, Sphere Server Products. So they are also with us, and we are their distributors in India. So a lot, lot to be carried, and of course, Heptra Controls. I can't forget because you know Ted Howe and I, we, we we clicked very well during the HR and. And we, we are all together because, you know, Ted, Ted, Ted brings with him a huge capability in terms of integration. And that's what Indian uh, thing, Indian buildings need. So all in all, a lot, lot of things and uh, that I brought home and now putting everything together and, you know, making it into uh, one big success for me. Well, I tell you what, Samir, we got to wrap it up, buddy. But I really appreciate it that Samir Prada, your view into India and uh, sort of one last comment I'd like to make and get your opinion on. Kenny and I went to the EZIO conference in Paris uh, back last fall and we think 
that we are in the middle of a controls renaissance, smart buildings controls renaissance. We're, we're seeing it sort of pop up around the world. Agree or disagree? Do you think India is going to get, is, is India on that track now? Or do you think, perceive that they will be in the near future? In fact, uh, in fact, uh, it's very much on track. It's very much on track. And uh, uh, Easy IO is, is a very, very popular brand, let me tell you, in India. In a very short span, Mike Marston has made a very huge footprint and uh, in India. And only last week, you know, we I, 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 I competed with Easy IO on a project. And so having said that, you know, Easy IO is, is, is approved in most of the tenders now. Which also goes on to say that you know people are moving from backnets and and the standard specifications that they had backnets and and lawn works, uh, and people are talking about Niagara. So I think that's that's a major major shift in the Indian psychology and the way Indian uh, building automation business is moving towards. Very very cool. Well, listen, we look forward to uh, to checking out uh, your coverage of those those conferences coming up in May, and uh, we'll we'll touch base with you again in about a week or two. Thanks for the great job you're doing for our community in India. Again, check it out, controltrends.in. Samir, thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, thanks a lot. Catch up, catch up soon with you guys again. All right, thanks. buddy. All Take right. care. Well, we mentioned with uh, Samir, what you have planned for May, and we know that we've got some things happening, and uh, this is kind of like a joint post contemporary controls enhanced jace performance in a truly open controller will be showcased at the niagara summit so hats off uh to george thomas and the crew uh joe stasic stasic uh sales manager for contemporary controls they're really really excited about the opportunity to to present and feature their new uh combination um, of software hardware that they will be uh, featuring at the Niagara Summit for the uh, all the systems integrators and all the control people in the world will come by their booth and they'll see how uh, the BAS automation products can enhance Niagara performance by offloading MSTP traffic handling from Jay's controllers by providing predefined Modbus device profiles to speed up commissioning and providing seamless connectivity to Sedona BACnet IP field controllers using Workbench or the Sedona application editor for programming. So again, uh, the sales manager, Joe Stiziak, uh, had a nice little post, but he talks, he says, our, back, our BAS router LX can offload MST traffic from your JACE and let you regain CPU uh, capacity for other activities. Or you can offload your JACE Modbus traffic by using the BAS gateway LX to convert Modbus to BACnet IP with a pre-built profile. So... Uh, Contemporary Controls has already built over 100 profiles and created and continue to add to the profile library. So please, when you when you go to the Niagara Summit, make sure you visit Contemporary Controls booth. And if you can't be there, then take your uh, go to our URL and check out the uh, the new software hardware uh, features from Contemporary Controls. And speaking of Contemporary Controls and George Thomas, one of our favorite people, we need we'd be remiss if we did not mention that George Thomas is in the Control Trends. Hall of Fame. Well, he sure has. And, and uh, you know what? I referred somebody to uh, Contemporary Control's website because, the, you know, they were interested in BACnet. And, and I was, wasn't surprised, but I didn't know how to tell somebody that, you know, it's there if you're looking for it, if you want to know, uh, because there's manufacturers that are not good at providing communication support on this technology that's outside of their sweet spot. So I advised her to go to uh, Contemporary Controls and watch the videos one through eight. And then when they had additional problems to go to that networking book that Contemporary Controls has made available at no charge to anybody in our industry that really goes down to the nuts and bolts when you're troubleshooting a network. And then if you need help, they have actually have a tool. Uh, Contemporary Controls has a tool, so does KMC, but uh, they tell you about the, the status of, of your backnet network and the devices and issues that uh, help you troubleshoot to get uh, to get the information back on the network and get you running. So great so, stuff. So it is great stuff. So Kenny, what's this I hear about more members of Haystack? <laughs> Project Haystack uh, just made a great announcement uh, on April 28th that they added new members demonstrating the continued acceptance of the organization's standards. So uh, came out of Richmond, Virginia, our friends, uh, John, yeah, John Petsy, Project Haystack Executive Director. John Petsy and Mark Petock are the big, uh, they're the spokes folks for the uh, Project Haystack. And uh, they're excited because, you know, 
the Haystack organization is a collaborative community that addresses the challenge of utilizing semantic modeling and tagging to streamline the interchange of data, interchange of data among different systems, devices, equipment, and software applications to lower the cost of intelligent building and IoT solutions. So they announced three associate member companies, Arup, Connex Energy, and Intellistar Technology. And uh, we've got a nice little uh, link for each company there and a little, uh, you know, mission statement from each of them. But basically, Arup is an independent firm of designers, planners, engineers, consultants, technical specialists offering a broad range of professional services. They're big. And if they uh, start pushing Project Haystack, it's going to make an impact. Connex Energy is one of the uh, most recognized leaders and developers and implementers of the last mile energy solutions for the smart grid and smart buildings. Uh, they're an SAAS data management platform company, a firm that provides core functionalities of IT and OT with secure connectivity. And then you have Intellistar technology, which is at the intersection of smart buildings and the smart grid. The InfraStack software platform is deployed in servers and the T-Star field devices, and it communicates over Intellistar Connect Cellular Data Services. And it provides a complete technology to deliver smart buildings and smart grid solutions. So, Kenny, let me ask you a question. Am I the only one who's missing Mark Peacock from Lake Spring? <laughs> uh, we hadn't seen Mark since he was uh, our MC at the Control Trends Awards. I mean, you know, he's one of the guys right at the center of all this, and Haystack's really cool stuff. So, Mark, if you're out there listening, we want to get you on the show, buddy. I miss you, man. I forgot what you look like even. so. Uh, well, he's staying busy, uh, Eric, on, on the uh, – he's making all the posts for um, Lake Spring, and, and the, the most recent one was the uh, the router that they put up. So he's staying, he's staying busy and uh, behind the curtains, but uh, – you're right. Hey, we come out from Mark. behind the curtains, Mark. Come back out from behind the curtains. You saw him at the Control Trends Awards with Kimberly Brown out there dancing on stage. He doesn't like to be behind the curtains. Come on, Mark. Come out back out, baby. We miss you. All right, man. So listen, the thing you got to know in this industry before you can blow with Haystack is you got to know how to size a steam valve, right, Kenny? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Eric, you know, with, with our business, what we do uh, day in and day out, the nuts and bolts, uh, we love to talk about, you know, Technology, and we love to talk about you know all the you know the glitter, uh, the golden glitter, and, and sometimes that's all you know with the, the data visualization and analytics and uh, you know all the good stuff. But the really nuts and bolts stuff that we do in our business is push air and water uh, through a building. Like uh, like Scotty Cochran said once upon a time that you know with all the new players coming in, you know they're still going to have to learn how to push air and water through a building. You know. And steam is, is a very tricky uh, media to do well. And you oversize a steam uh, valve and you make people unhappy, you create that haunting effect. Well, this stuff that Belimo shows on how to steam valve size and select is, is vital to anybody in the business. And even, even if you've been doing it for a long time, it's good to get updated because right. well, well, technology's changing. Well, I want, I want to interject here, okay, because you mentioned Mark Peacock being behind the curtain. Okay. And we've all seen the wizard of Oz and the wizard is the guy who's behind the curtain that make this, making it happen. What's so exciting to me about this particular seminar, Kenny, is the wizard himself is teaching it. So, uh, this guy didn't get out much. His name is Bob Ripka. He has been doing valves since before they were invented. I think the guy's 450 years old. He knows his stuff. So if, even if you do know how to size steam valves, getting the opportunity to listen to what Bob Ripka has to say is going to be an absolute treat. So Belimo does a lot of uh, training webinars. They have great trainers, but it's going to be a real treat with, uh, with Bob Ripka doing it. So mark your calendars. Kenny, I think that's coming up this Wednesday, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, May 11th at one o'clock Eastern daylight time. So um, Wednesday, May 11th, actually uh, two weeks from now. And, and listen, if you sign up for it, go to the comments and said, Eric told us to ask for the wizard. Nice. There you What's go. What's his name? Is It was the Wizard of Oz, right? And you uh, know yeah. that steam stuff going on? I think Bob Ripka is the original Wizard of Oz. And I know, yeah, about, uh, I know about Bob Ripka because his son Steve worked for us for a while. Steve Ripka is another great guy. He's back with Belimo. But, uh, you know, these Ripkas, they know their technology. Steve Ripka is one of the brightest, brightest guys I know. And his dad, I tell you what, is awesome. So go see the Wizard. All right, Kenny, what do we have up next, big dog? Well done. Uh, Eric, we have, uh, you know, one of the, um, another featured thermostat that we did an interview at the Controls Group North America. Uh, we had mentioned Schneider Electric has a very neat thermostat uh, that's out there. And uh, I just, 
I'm, I'm excited because, you know, when we as distributors have to provide solutions, you know, you need to be able to go to uh, kind of like a, the best fit. Uh, you know, you have good, better, best, and then it's nothing more difficult than trying to uh, meet a specification that, you know, wants everything but wants, wants it at the lowest cost point. So when you see these manufacturers put together a thermostat that's a commercial thermostat by the, 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 the core feature uh, benefits like three heat, three cool, uh, can control heat pumps with one or two compressors and up to two-stage auxiliary heats, an onboard temperature sensor, and most importantly, an onboard humidity sensor. So you're minimizing your parts and, and you don't you don't have to have as much uh, installation issues. Uh, multiple configurable inputs and outputs. So uh, this will take you into your CO2, uh, any application that you get that you need to do uh, demand control ventilation. Uh, it is a setup wizard that uh, enables very rapid system configuration, no tools, no software, uh, and then it has the, of course, a full-blown uh, seven-day occupancy schedule and a sleek uh, backlit five-inch LCD touchscreen. So the people that uh, have to meet requirements now, you know, uh, things have to be either turned on so that they're visible in, in a dim time when it's unoccupied. You can still see where the thermostat's at. You can still read it. Uh, people have uh, issues with the very, very small print. If you can't see it, what good is it? So, you know, the presentation is very important. And most incredible about this RDY 2000 is it now comes with the RDY 2000 BN is in back net. And this now takes this commercial thermostat that was primarily a standalone uh, solution and now gives you uh, the, the flexibility of starting out as a standalone. And when the time and, and, and finances come and it gets integrated into the building management system, whoever's it is, it's back net, you can add it on uh, with no issues whatsoever. So it's, it's just really a, an improvement to a great thermostat. And they're going to start getting uh, more and more of their share of uh, thermostat market. Yeah, and not only that, it was a thermostat of the year at the Control Trends Awards this year as voted on and by our global Control Trends community. So a special shout out to Joshua Felborn, the national sales manager at Siemens. Great guy. Siemens doing a lot of innovative stuff. So uh, happy for those guys, huh, Kenny? Yeah, well, like I say, uh, Siemens is on a, a new uh, – it's kind of like a new new philosophy. Uh, you know, the softer side of uh, Siemens is just really uh, working because the the technology they've always had it. It's just that it was kind of a you know it was uh, coming from a one 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 you know dimension one one channel, and that was the local branch. Well, now some of these great Siemens products that have been available uh, that had not been available are now available. Whether it's uh, you know the humidity sensors that they have right up there with Weisla. Uh, you know, they've got the, the VFDs are top notch, the VT300 series. Uh, and then you've got uh, all the uh, accessory items within the building uh, automation framework that used to be branch only are now coming through distribution. So we're seeing a, a really interesting innovation there. And I'm sure it's going to be very successful for Siemens because uh, they're going to be able to service an underserviced market. Something else, Kenny. And I tell you what, uh, you got that as a great technology. And then our next post. I uh, got a chance to talk to Larry Weber from uh, Honeywell, talk about people that invented the, the, the small space, I say, with their light commercial system. You and I both handled that product years ago. They're coming back in in a big time way. So tell us a bit about our interview with uh, Larry Weber. Love to. Uh, this was, again, uh, farmed out of the 2016 CGNA Synergy Conference. Um, Again, I, I applaud uh, your, your, your style, uh, your ability to extract you know, good information and, and keep an interview going. It's a lot harder than it looks. I can, I can testify to that. But the important information that Larry Weber presents is incredible. First, he's a consummate executive. He really knows his stuff. He can do it, uh, he can do it himself if he had to. But the, he's leading an organization uh, on the magnitude of Honeywell scale that uh, they basically introduced DDC controls to the LCBS. And uh, we are seeing a new terminology coming up, and I think you and I have coined it, and I think it's uh, worthy of uh, you know, mentioning, is that the LCBS was the light commercial building solutions, but that now has evolved because of the new capabilities that Honeywell is introducing where you can now reinvent. They're reinventing how data will be used and how service will be provided and how maintenance will be provided to small and medium-sized buildings because, uh, as, as we say, the race to the small space uh, is introducing requirements. It's an underserviced market. But now they're going to put controls out there. They're going to have built-in analytics, built-in capabilities that are already there, and uh, they'll give you a taste of it. And should you think that that's important, you can incorporate that. You can sustain that in your building management operations. So it's going to be a new style. But 
Honeywell introduced DDC controls, like you said, probably about uh, what ninety three, ninety two, yep. right? And it That'd just seventy six hundred. We we put visibility into buildings that didn't have it before. I mean, it, they literally had a NIU, and then they had the XL fifteen B, and they evolved the, the, through the series that really truly captured so much of that market. It just really invigorated because it had a very quick return on investment. Well. As Larry mentions here, these smart controls, so the, the new terminology that we're going to start seeing more and more of is like commercial smart controls. So LCSC is what I'm going to start calling it because I really believe in it because the, the more that, that you put into a controller that has it embedded into it, uh, the more uh, of, a, of a sale you have, the potential. The recurring revenues there are fabulous for contractors are going to service buildings and, and make a living on doing that. They're now going to be able to offer services of, of, to a small and medium-sized building that were only available through very elaborate building management systems uh, previously. No, I think so, so Kenny. I, I think they nailed it. And, and I think the really cool thing that I love about Larry, Larry's done the data, he's done the research. And this product is probably not for somebody that's an existing systems integrator. Not that they wouldn't sometimes use it, but, uh, but that small building space, and, and as you said, it was so expensive that you couldn't you couldn't cost justify a smaller system to, to, for for those smaller spaces. But now, because of economies of scales and things like that, people like KMC who has a great system have have a system that uh, that, that the service contractors are going in and offering it. Uh, you sign up, sign up for a five year a service agreement. We'll put this in for you. So it gives you data. It gives you analytics. So Larry really makes this case. He talks about the fact that. Uh, uh, you got these service contractors that are working with these small buildings and they, they cherish these people, right? And a lot of these guys that do a lot with the service contracts don't want a building automation system because they don't want to incur the risk. They don't want to take a chance on putting a system in and losing that service agreement because that service agreement is reoccurring revenue. And it also, for every dollar in service, I think Larry did a statistic, it's like $30 that you're picking up annually in additional sales. So you got a thousand dollar Service contract is $30,000 in additional revenue, okay? But, and this is the point that Larry makes, and this is where I think Honeywell is really gearing up. I think their market initially for this product, Kenny, is that contractor that does service work that is staying away from automation controls because either it's too complicated or they don't want to have the risk or they don't want to make the investment, okay? And I think what Larry would say there is two things. Number one as business gets more competitive because it's in the service business is the same thing, your cost to serve, you better be looking for ways to scale your cost to serve down because as those things get rebid, you've got to stay price competitive. So with things like this, the diagnostics built in and things like that, you're able to, first of all, get an alert. If there is an issue, you're able to maybe diagnose it remotely without, you mentioned like having to reset things instead of actually having to go out to the site, you might be able to reset things remotely. But more importantly, if you can diagnose the problem instead of going to the job site, figuring out what's wrong, and then sending your guy to a supply house, many times you're going to be able to diagnose the problem and you're going to be able to stop on the supply house on the way out, making you more efficient. So it's mandatory, I think, in this business, you're going to have to get on board with a system like this to drive your cost to serve down. Now, the second thing is the owners are getting more savvy, right? So the owners are going to want to have the, the analytics and, and the data points and the energy consumption so they can make more intelligence decisions. Don't believe me, go to real time Ibicon because those people are all over it. What's happened on the large scale is going to happen on the small scale. So the other thing I would tell our, our service-based contractors and on control trends, hey, if you're not telling your end user about this and offering something like the Honeywell system to your end users, somebody else will. And you might wake up one day and have lost that, that integrator. So the good news is these systems are not complicated. I mean, especially Honeywell and, and KMC, others, they're designing these systems to be very easy to install. Heck, even Mike Marston, the, the beast from the East, the EZIO, fits that race to the small space. But I think, I think, you know, as you and I talk a lot on the show, Kenny, you can't sit on the sidelines anymore. You're going to have to hop in, learn a little bit about this. They're great products. They're price competitive. They're easy to learn. And uh, you need to start offering your customers uh, the option for having, you know, integration in their small spaces. Plus, uh, Eric, you know, the, uh, going back to the nitty gritty of the business and the industry, this is a two-step channel uh, you know, 
type of service and solution. Uh, you know, Honeywell has eliminated uh, all the obstacles, so you don't have to have the big overhead. You don't need to have the staff IT guy that gets you, uh, you know, the web services gets you the ability to do all the, the heavy lifting. Uh, you know, this is this stuff is almost like plug and play. And so it, it, it focuses on the actual doing the service and the maintenance of a facility. Uh, like you said about the, the costs, so that what happens is if you're bidding on a project and you know that you have the ability to apply these services and you can remotely access everything and do those the diagnostics you were mentioning, uh, you don't roll a truck. So you, you can factor in the savings that this technology that's provided by Honeywell, that's embedded into the controllers, this now is there. All you have to do is basically try it because if you try it you're going to like it. I think this is really going to this is going to really invigorate contractor participation. I think it's going to invigorate the two-step distribution where the distributor that has that that you know basically uh, knowledge of how the the uh, the whole uh, installation uh, the bidding process they can help a contractor take uh, a contractor that right now is just doing service work, getting in, getting out and competing uh, for all their worth to get in a very competitive market to get more market can rely on a distributor to, to uh, help them take this new technology and apply it and then sustain it. So, uh, you know, and again, it's, uh, it's, it, the products are going to be um, available. I think the third quarter is where you're going to see the rooftop unit that's going to have this embedded diagnostics in it. Now, the way I understand it uh, is that you're going to have a taste of this. It's going to come with it whether you use it or not. Uh, there's no loss to the person that bought the controller because it's still going to function the way a rooftop controller should. But then if you do see it and you put a bunch of rooftop unit controllers in there and you can aggregate that information and provide analytics and, and, and start to talk about those operational savings and the false truck runs and then you can do the diagnostics so that you can see what's coming up or when you need to do the service work and you can provide the, the energy information to somebody that's trying to keep off the, you know, the smart grid, trying to deal with the automated de demand response. You know, the stuff now is going to be embedded in your controllers. So I, think, I think it's just going to be a no-brainer. I think this thing's going to be hugely successful uh, once, once people get a taste of it because it's like technology, it's like watching the you know, HD screen. Once you get a taste of it, you don't want to go back to black and white television. Boom! There we go, Kenny Smyers. You can't say it any better than that. So, buddy, we've been talking for a while here. I mean, it's good to be back in the saddle. There's a lot to be said for routine. So, before we sign off, I want to say a special shout-out to Mario from Controls Consultants up in Boston. He worked with John Donahue. Mario and his wife had a uh, child about a year ago. Having just traveled back from California with two children, small children of my own, I'm wondering, Mario, how you're doing? And reach out in comments, let us know. And uh, hey, with that, Kenny Smyers, a special thanks to Samir Pradham, our man in India, giving you a window into India. And uh, a special thanks to all the people we got to interview out at uh, uh, Controls uh, uh, CGNA, uh, Larry Weber, Mike Sackett, and we got a host, that we post, a host of others we'll be hosting next week. So with that big dog, anything else to say before we go boom? Hey, you nailed it, right? You nailed it. Hey, when you nail it, you nail it, big dog. So listen, let's get on with the rest of the day. So I'm Eric Stromquist. He is Kenny Smyers, the man, the myth, the legend. Remember, be bold and stay in control. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. Yeah, they got to be bold, man. That's what it's all about. All right. I like that, yeah.